If you've ever tried to take a picture of the night sky with your phone, you've probably been disappointed. As good as phone cameras are, their aperture is really tiny, which is not a good way to capture lots of light from something as dim as the stars. So I got out my Raspberry Pi camera, which has the so-called high quality image sensor. It's not the best image sensor out there, but I had it on hand. What I didn't have on hand was any CS mount lenses. Now, a normal person would probably just go out and buy one of those, but actually I have lots of lenses on hand already. Here's a random lens from something. Um, these lenses on this 8mm film camera are still good, even though no one uses 8mm film really anymore. And I have a lens from a film camera and some lenses from a better film camera. But as you might have noticed, none of these will fit onto the Raspberry Pi. So for me, the answer to that is 3D printing. But my usual FDM machines probably aren't up to the task of making a thread this fine for this C-mount lens. So I turn to my resin printer, which makes a perfectly serviceable thread that fits just fine. And another great thing about 3D printing is that you can often brute force something into working that you otherwise couldn't find anything about. So I looked up these lenses and couldn't find any details about how to make this thread, but I could make one that works. Unfortunately for these eight millimeter movie lenses, the focal distance makes them not work for my application. So if you look at the camera here, that little silver square is where the film would go. And you'll notice the distance between that and the edge of the lens. It's a lot smaller than it is on here when it's installed like that. So these lenses can't actually focus to infinity when they're attached to this, so they're pretty much useless. The lens I ended up using was this one, and if you compare it to a phone lens, well, that's a lot more area, so I have higher expectations that this will deliver something. But there's still the issue of attaching it to the camera. And I did find someone who made the mating features for this Pentax M mounting system. But as usual with 3D printing, you always have to do a few prints before the thing actually fits like it's supposed to. And I didn't want to resin print that because resin printing takes a long time and is messy. So I went with my usual FDM here and got something that fits pretty well. And then for the other side, I made an adapter piece that takes this thin thread and makes a coarse thread. And that works pretty nicely. You can get a place to attach your crappy tripod or a better tripod if you have one. And the last addition I made to this setup was to use a flash drive to store the images so that when I was done, I didn't have to go on the network and download gigabytes of data off the SD card, which is not that fast. I could just take this to my computer. So the last thing to do is tip the camera back and take it somewhere dark. Now, when I built all this stuff and took it with me last year, it was cloudy all week. But this year, I did get a couple of clear nights. So the first thing I did after setting up the Raspberry Pi and focusing the lens is get it to run this Python program. Now I didn't actually use any of the modules that are there specifically to control the Raspberry Pi camera. Uh, instead this just runs this command line command every couple seconds. And this Raspberry still command is, or at least it used to be, I think it's actually depreciated now, but it's the command line command to just make the Pi camera take a picture. And there's various options in here that are like uh, turning off the auto exposure, setting the gain to some high value, and setting the exposure time or the shutter speed. In my case, six seconds. Um, as it turns out, the high quality camera can actually expose for, I think, up to 200 seconds or something, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, it's all here in the documentation, by the way. If you... But in any case, after a night of doing that, we're left with thousands of JPEG images. So let's look at one. And sure enough, there's some stars in there. 
Now, I guess this isn't the best picture ever. Uh, there's some lens flaring or maybe focus issues. I'm really not sure, but the fact that we can see the stars at all, I consider that to be a success. Anyway, the first thing I thought of doing with all these pictures is making them into a video, which looks like this. Now, I'm sure you were expecting the best video ever, but this is not that. Yeah, although you can't see the rotation of the Earth, which is kind of cool, I guess. To make something a little bit more interesting, I'm going to try my hand at some image processing. Now, what I'm going to do is really not all that different from what you would do in a long exposure if you were taking it in camera. So, in a long exposure, you just let the image sensor collect more and more uh, photons. But since I have pictures that are already taken, I'm just going to add up the pixels from one image onto the next image, and then the next image, and so on, building up the brightness of the image. If we take a look at that, uh, we can start to see trails of the stars. But the entire image turns white very quickly, and that's because even the dark areas in the image still have a little bit of noise in it. They're not completely black. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is for all the images, any areas that are below a certain value, I'm just going to turn them black. And then we can add all the pixels together and the dark areas where nothing's happening are going to stay dark. So now we have something that looks pretty cool. But besides that, there's things in this image I can see that I couldn't see when I was looking at the individual images. So I'm guessing this is how the newer phones and probably some astronomy software works to make really dim things visible and get a really good picture of the night sky. Of course, taking into account the rotation and lining up everything so that they stack properly. Now, even though I'm not an astronomer or a photographer, I'm just some guy with a poorly improvised camera, there are a few things I learned from the images that I've taken. In particular, the North Star Polaris is actually not nearly as close to the axis of the Earth's rotation as I previously thought. It's in fact almost an entire degree off, and there's several other stars visible in my pictures that are much closer, like this one, or this one. But if we look at the brightness of these stars, they're so dim that you'd probably never be able to see them with the naked eye. So, if you're looking for north using the stars, probably the normal north star is the one you want to go for. So it also gives us a chance to see how we did in terms of being able to see things. So we can check the brightnesses of you know, various things we can see in the image. Looks like the dimmest star that I can see in my images is this one, which is a magnitude 11. That's already way dimmer than you'd be able to see with your eyes, so I'd say this is a success. But maybe with some actual camera equipment, I could do something a little bit better. So I may have to revisit this project. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.